Hello, receiving students, ATs, and receiving teachers. Thank you, take your seat. Receiving students and ATs, before we go into our two days lesson, I would like to recap from uh, recap some things from our previous lesson, or main key concepts from our previous lesson. Now, in our previous lesson, we, we were measuring circumference and diameter of circular and cylindrical objects. Receiving students, I'd like you to explain the definition and meaning of diameter to your teacher. Let's have a, from the model class, we will have one boy from the back row to give us the meaning of circumference. Okay, let's have our friend there. Yeah? The boundary of a circle. Good. Circumference is the boundary of a circle, or we can say the length all around the outside or all around the outside of the circle. So boundary simply means the length all around the circle. Receiving students and ATs, that is the meaning of circumference. Now let's have one from one girl from the front row to give us the diameter. Uh, we will have our friend there. Yeah? Half the boundary of a circle. Receiving students and ATs. One of our friends said half the boundary of a circle. What is half the boundary of a circle? Semicircle. Semicircle. Okay. Well, let's have our friend there. Yeah? A code that passes through the center. Very good. Diameter is a code that passes through the center of a circle. So by now you should know the meaning of circumference and a diameter. Now receiving students in 80s, once again I will go through a short demonstration on how we can measure diameter. In our previous lesson, we saw that some of, some of us did not really understand how to measure the diameter, especially positioning the object to measure the diameter. So I will do a quick, uh, quick demonstration on how we can measure the diameter. Now, can I have uh, Jeremiah and Jeremy and Rachel, please? Now, receiving students and ATs. These are the materials that we are going to use to measure the diameter. So I will do a quick demonstration. The first step, what I have here, I have a blank A4 paper with a line being ruled on it receiving students and ATs, as you can see the paper. Now, before you measure a diameter, you have to have a blank sheet of paper with a line rule on it, okay? And you can also see a mark, which has been shown there. Now, let's have the, we will, I will uh, demonstrate how to measure the diameter. Then we have the object here. In our previous lesson, we saw that some of you were measuring the object. The object, instead of lying the, the object, putting flat on the uh, table, it was standing upright, which is not correct. It's supposed to be flat. Okay? Now, you put the object flat in the case of cylindrical objects like this. Okay? It should be flat on the table. And then you have your two uh, papers which is folded in half. Now these, are the, these two papers will be stand upright opposite of the object and not to be uh, flat on the ground. Okay, I will have 
my two friends here. Jeremy, please, can you come stand on the side? Okay. Jeremy, please, can you uh, hold on to this? Can you see the line there? Okay, it should be straight on the line. Richard. Hold again. One side of your hand, hold again. Now, from this distance, it's already been marked, like I've shown you already. Now, after you put the two papers vertically op uh, upright, opposite to the object, this is the point that you mark the next distance or the next point. In our previous lesson, we saw that some of you were sleeping the papers like this. No, it shouldn't be sleep. I mean flat on the ground. It's supposed to be standing upright. Okay? Now, after you have marked the two points, now you can get your ruler and then measure the distance of the two points to find the diameter. The distance that you get will be the diameter of the object. So receiving students in 80s, please, once again I have just demonstrated how you can correctly measure the diameter. And if you were doing uh, some of those, uh, practicing some of those uh, steps that which was not correct, please, from the short observation uh, demonstration, uh, please, next time when you are measuring the diameter of a cylindrical object, you should be following the one which I have just shown you. Now receiving students in 80s, we will now move on to our two days lesson. Thank you, uh, Jeremy and Rachel. Receiving students in 80s, our lesson topic for today is identifying pi. It is going to be another interesting topic because you are going to learn so many things in this lesson. So I would like your concentration and your involvement in this lesson is very important. Now receiving students in 80s, before we identify pi, we need to know what pi is. What is pi? Receiving students in 80s. Okay, I have the definition for you on the screen. Receiving students in 80s, can you read the meaning of pi? So that is the meaning of the word pi. It's the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of any circle. Now the next thing that we should know is how do we identify pi? Now to identify pi, we divide the circumference by its diameter. By doing that, we identify the pi, which is the ratio between the circumference and its diameter. So, as you can see from the screen, how do we identify pi? By dividing the circumference by its diameter. And you can use this simple formula which is on the screen. C over T. Receiving students in 80s, C stands for what? Circumference. Circumference and D stands for diameter. Now, in our previous lesson, we were measuring circumference and diameter. We are going to use those informations and then try to divide the circumference and the diameter to find the ratio, which is pi. So, in our previous lesson, we, we did make a mention, the teacher made a mention to keep those uh, tables that you have, uh, tables of 
objects, cylindrical objects and circular uh, objects, which you have measured their diameter and the circumference. You should have that table with you, receiving students in 80s. We are going to use those informations to find that, to identify pi. Now, if you see the screen, I have the information which was used in the previous lesson. You should have such information with you. Now, the objects which have been from the screen, you have the table there. The object column, we have the circumference and the diameter, and we have other additional column which is added to the table, which is the column where we are going to identify pi. Now, receiving students in 80s, we are going to use the table. You have your information there, but for the meantime, we are going to use the table which I have just shown you. I would like you to divide the circumference and its diameter using the uh, information on the table and to find the ratio. Try dividing the circumference and the diameter of those objects which is on the screen to find the pi or the ratio. So I'd like you to do that in your group, receiving students in 80s. Receiving students in 80s, you will see that some of the answers will, there will be decim uh, numbers continuing or repeating. You can round off your numbers to the to two decimal places. Please round off your numbers to two decimal places. On the table, you can see the, the objects which was me, uh, measured in our previous lesson. We have the cup here, and can coke, and one kina coin, a small one kina coin, small size one kina coin. The circumference and the diameter of these informations are all on the table which I have just shown you.
receiving students in 80s. I hope you have uh, found, found a ratio of the three objects there. So we will now look at the ratios of the objects, the circumference and the diameter. Now what is the ratio or the pi or pi that you got for cup receiving students in 80s? Can you tell your teacher? Let's say from the model class. What is the ratio? Remember, we are dividing the circumference by its diameter to find the ratio. Give the answer. Two decimal places. Three is to one three. Three is to one three. Our friend said three is to one three. Is that correct? Uh, good, uh, good try, uh, AB. AB, good try. Can we have other answers? Diane, what is your answer to two decimal places, the ratio? 3.13 cm. 3.13 cm. Raise your hands up if you got 3.13 cm receiving students in 80s. Okay, we have some hands there. Now, let's see what I have on the screen. The ratio of the circumference and its diameter. Okay, the ratio of the circumference and its diameter, if you divide the circumference and its diameter, you will get 3.13, 3.13. Receiving students in 80s, let's have the ratio for, ratio of the circumference and the diameter of Kenko. What is the ratio? Okay, let's have our friend there. 3.23 cm. 3.23 cm. Any other answers? Okay. Three point zero nine. Three point zero nine. Okay, I will show mine, which is on the screen. Let's uh, look at what is on the screen. We have three point. 0, 9, 3.09. So that is the ratio between the circumference and its diameter of a can cope. Now, what do we have for one kina? What is the ratio? Okay, let's have a friend there. Yeah? 3.05. 3.05. Let's have a boy. 3.05, thank you for your answer. We'll cross check with, okay, Jeremy. 3.06 cm. 3.06 cm, okay, let's confirm those two answers. Which of the answers are likely correct? Huh? Okay, we have the ratio which is 3.06 cm. Now, receiving students in 80s, as you can see from the screen, we do not have the units. The ratios are not given units because while in the division process, we did canceling, okay? Centimeter, uh, canceling process has taken place, so the final answer was not given units. So that's why we do not have the units on the last column, the ratio column. 
now receiving students and ATs. From the investigation, dividing the circumference and its diameter. As you can see from the screen, what conclusion can you make from the ratio of the circumference and its diameter? What conclusion can you make? Look at the table, especially the last column, the ratios. What can you say about the value of the ratio? Receiving students in 80s, our friend here, Winnie, is going to uh, explain what he thinks, uh, she thinks about the ratio of the circumference and its diameter from the results. The value of the, all the objects as decimal points. Okay, that's what she thinks. Any items? Okay, let's have Eddie. In ratio, in ratio, unit is excluded. In the ratio, unit is excluded. Okay. Any other answers? Receiving students and ATs, I hope you are explaining, uh, explaining your answers to the teachers. Can we have last one? Diane? Okay, let's have Diane. The ratio of circumference and the diameter are given in decimal points, so the entrance should be in decimal point also. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. Now, I would like to explain what conclusion should I make or should we make from the ratio of a circumference and its diameter. Now, look at the table, the ratio column. If you look at the ratio column, all the ratios given for the objects are almost the, always the, is precisely same. The ratio is precisely same. What is the value? Three. Three, Three times and a little bit more. Can you see from the table? The ratio. It is preci precisely same, which is Three, uh, approximately three times and a little bit more from the uh, results that you we, uh, that we found out or from the investigation. Now you can see the results that are on the table. Now we have what we have done. We have identified the ratio, which is pi. Now we are coming to the summary. To sum up the lesson, I would like to explain the actual or give you the actual value of the pi. The actual value for the pi is 3.1415926. And the name of the word, the name of pi, actual name for pi is called Secular constant, okay, receiving uh, teachers. The actual name for the pi is called secular constant. And the value is 3.1415926. That is the actual value of pi. Because this ratio, secular, uh, secular constant, is a special number, it is given a special symbol. As you can see from the screen, that is the symbol that represents pi. Pi is a Greek letter, receiving students and atheists. It is a Greek letter. So when you see that symbol, you must know that it represents, it simply means pi. The approximation for pi is pi is approximately equal to 3.14 as decimal. 
Now it has been rounded off to two decimal places. So sometimes when you are doing calculations, they will give you that value as decimal. Approximately 3.14 as decimal. Sometimes it is given as fractions. Pi as fraction is approximately 22 over 7. So when you see those two values, you must always think that that is the value for pi. Okay, approximate value for pi. Receiving students in 80s, the formula to identify pi is pi is equals to circumference over d, which is the diameter. C stands for circumference, d stands for diameter. Receiving students in 80s, our key phrase for today is secular constant pi. This has brought us to the end of our lesson for today. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you.